Hello, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Janice. What is a zest fest? And is ballroom dancing still more popular now because of the TV exposure? Well, we'll find out together, won't we, next on Our Time. Welcome, welcome. Yes. yes. Welcome, be even you welcome. Sorry. It's lovely to have a special guest this week. What was that all about? I was doing a number from Cabaret. Oh. Because we're talking about Zest Fest with Jane Bose. Welcome, Jane. Thank you very much. And you're the uh, festival director, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Now, it's a big, big festival, Zest Fest. It is. It's a statewide festival right over South Australia. How it's often is the Zest Fest? Is it every two years or every year? No, it's annual, so every, every year, year in October. And it's South Australia's event uh, for what's National Seniors Week. So every state has something for Seniors Week. Right. But we're very lucky because we're the only state in Australia that has a festival. How wonderful. Well, we're a big state for festivals, I guess. Indeed we so are. There's about nine or ten of them now that are sort of spread throughout the year, giving everybody an opportunity to be part of it. But Zest Fest is particularly targeted at... People over 50. So it is oh. Zest Fest. Well, we festival. can't go, Janice, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a festival for modern ageing. So we're really thinking about um, ageing and ageing as we want to age, as mm. you just said. Uh, you know, you two don't quite make the grade yet. <laughs> because they say... We lie through our teeth, which are also false. Stop it. <laughs> 70 is the new 50. And you yes, all heard that's that. what they say. Oh, and I'm 50 then again. <laughs> I like that. So we're really thinking about ageing and how to start smashing some of those stereotypes mm. of ageing. So it's called a festival for modern ageing because we're very much about ageing as we will age now, and not how we recall our parents and mm. aunts and uncles age. Quite different. Isn't that the truth, yeah. Jane? I keep thinking, when I turned 70, and I'm happy to admit that I'm 70, one, <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember people that age when I was young thinking they were ancient. Yes. Because they didn't so much take care of themselves physically. Their diets perhaps weren't as, we weren't as conscious then about the food intake, mm. or in fact how we how we actually aged, how we looked after our bodies, or what care we took. The medical profession wasn't as active, I suppose. I like the fact that one of the one of the um, events is talking about um, how to end our life. Yes, indeed. Uh, not in not in the end our life, end <laughs> our life, but. Preparing to end our life. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we want to have control of our lives. And a lot of what we're talking about in Zest Fest is actually taking control and making conscious decisions about how we want to live our lives, how we want to spend uh, either our retirement years. Mm -hmm. But for many people, they're still working, you know. Um, yes. I'm sure, well, my husband's going to be 71 this year as well, and he still works full time. So when we talk about people over 50, it is a really wide spectrum of people with a wide range of experiences. Well, I think because we're not forced to retire. Yes. You know, we can just keep working. If you're healthy enough, keep working. And if you like what you're doing as well, yes. you keep Absolutely. working. Absolutely. We actually have a session uh, in Zestfest on mature age workers and looking at some of the latest research and things like that. Um, that's going to be co-hosted by the University of South Australia. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, we have another session about um, plan your own death. Yes. So a chance to have a, a chat about that. You've heard about the death cafes. Um, and it's about, you know, starting to have an understanding of what that is and, and making those decisions, those conscious decisions of what we want to do and how that will how that Yeah, when will you're be. when you're actually that you want to actually to. take control to mm. be able to take control. Absolutely. But there's lots of happy things on too. Oh yes, there's many, many happy things. We have a fabulous Zest Festoration that's going to be held on Monday, October the 14th. And I'm hoping by the time this goes to air there'll still be some tickets available because I know people will want to rush to see uh, the um, oration this year and it's going to be given by Ita Butros. Yes. So we're very pleased to have her come to Adelaide very and present special. the oration. Yes. Yeah, so that will be great. Um, and we've got some things that you can really get actively involved in as well. We've got the Zestfulness Workshop. So we're really looking at the zestfulness in our lives and starting to um, reinvent the next phase of our lives. And we're going to have a workshop on that. And then it will be followed by Zest for Success, Finding Your Greatness. 
So again, it's about making those conscious choices and decisions about how we want to live and what our older lives will be like and mm. not having to actually fall into those stereotypes Ooh. that we talked about earlier about ageing, but to make those choices of the fun we want to have, the things we want to see, the things we want to talk about. Ooh. I love this in, in the program. Old age is an excellent time for outrage. My goal is to stay or do at least one outrageous thing every week. <laughs> I'd say every day if you can. <laughs> How long does do the festival go quote. for, Jane? Uh, the festival goes for two weeks, two from weeks. the 14th to the 28th of October. And although I've talked about a few of the things that we're doing in the curated program, it actually is an open access program as well. So there's over 200 events right across the state that are being put on by all sorts of local companies, theatre groups. Well, one um, of them's ours, in fact, for our short, our back to back short show festival. Absolutely. Mm. And you've got quite a few shows in that. We've got you? lots, yeah, over 20 different shows with nearly 40 performances. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's a lot. And a lot of the local governments come on board um, and some of them do some fantastic presentations. Mm. The program's not released yet, so I can't let any of those things out just yet, but it will be released um, on the 28th of August, um, so people will be able to pick up their copy of the ZestFest program then. How and long has the sorry, ZestFest um, been going, Jane? How oh, many years? now, ZestFest, the, given the name ZestFest, has been going only since 2017, but actually the festival is one of the oldest festivals in South Australia, and this year is its 52nd year. Is that right? So it's had various names and yes. various guises, but for 52 years, South Australia has been celebrating ageing. That's fantastic. That's well, really... we're pretty good at all of those things when yeah. you think about it, because being the sort of state, the way that South Australia was settled and how we all began, um, there's a lot of firsts, like women getting the vote and so on, and being able to vote. Mm. First woman yes. in parliament here. We've talked mm. about those things. The program's going to look something like this one, isn't it? That's right. So where can we get a program? Because that's really important. Absolutely. There'll be thousands, many, many thousands printed, and you'll be able to pick them up at lots of cafes and places around town where we can normally pick up these things. Mm. But we'll also make sure that they're in easy access to people living in the region. So local library, local government, community centres, places like that. And of course, any organisation that has registered an event, such as you have, um, you'll be able to pick them up there as well. So um, there'll so, be plenty of And around. is there stuff online? Can we find stuff on the internet? Absolutely. Uh, go online to www.zestfest.com.au. Easy. Um, Brilliant. Easy to remember. Easy to remember. Um, and if you just Google Zestfest, it should come up as well. Because that's clearly one of the growing areas for ageing people is the internet. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we've all become almost self-reliant on it. I've actually got rid of all my old encyclopedia books that I had from a child. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't got any space. You know how oh, you yeah. accumulate so much stuff and you think, why on earth am I keeping all this yeah. stuff? I can just type in something yeah. and Ooh. there's the world at my Absolutely. fingertips. And then you're getting much more up-to-date information. Absolutely, as well. yes. So do check the online program because as more and more things are registered, we'll be putting them on there. Yeah. Um, and there could be updates as well. So it is really key to do that. So as some things are ticketed events. So can you buy the tickets online as well? Because that's... Uh, we do have some being sold through Eventbrite, such as the Zest Restoration. You can buy a ticket through Eventbrite. Right. So if you go into Eventbrite and just Google Zest Restoration, that will come up. Right. Um, and a few others as well. There's certainly other program uh, program events from the registered events. Yes. That are throughout the state. They'd that all have individual things. Yeah. That's right. So it's a matter of just choosing the event you want to go to and making sure that you know how to get a ticket if that's relevant or Absolutely. Uh, there are obviously free events as well I imagine. There are many many free events and we try very hard to have free or low cost events mm. um, and that's a real priority to, for us. But the other thing is if people do want more information or they're struggling to go online and find what they want or can't find a program they only need to ring us and we'll send one out to them. So oh. if you're in Kota SA uh, do you want me to say the number? Yeah. 8224 0799. Gosh, I hope that's right. <laughs> no, it's not. 
822. No, 8232042422. We get out the phone and just double check. 8232042422. Okay. I'll have to go to that session about getting my memory up to date. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I did and who to... are you again? Um... <laughs> Yeah, Apologies, viewers. <laughs> no, you know you think. No, you think, and no. it's a lifetime of accumulated knowledge. And if you've arranged anything, I know only too well. Your head is buzzing with so many different things. Yeah. You, we were just talking. Uh, Jane was saying before. Do you mind if I have some paper in front of me? Because it's just too much to remember. And it's true. We we've forgotten that we actually read. Sometimes in television, it's all pretend that you're not reading anything, yeah. but the reality is you, you can't remember things. everything. Absolutely. Because we've had a lifetime <laughs> of memories in our heads. Absolutely. We keep so much information yes. up yeah. there, don't so, we? So, ZestFest starts? It starts on Monday, October the 14th and runs to October the 28th. Brilliant. Yeah. Write that in your diary, Brilliant. don't forget. And Malcolm, I'm really hoping that you'll take part in Senior Slam. We're having slam poetry. Oh, and what about the pub. nude posters? Oh, nude calendar. I've got you lined up. Start uh, thinking of your favourite place uh, in nature. Standing behind a brick wall would be a good place for me. I'd like oh, something see. more natural than that. Now, the calendar's <laughs> called the Nature Strip. Right. And we think it'll be a great seller for Christmas. Oh, I'm sure so it will. Great gift. Um, make not, sure you grab a copy. I'm not promising I'll Jane, do that. Jane, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment to talk um, <laughs> to. Uh, read English about ballroom dancing. Can't wait. Dancing with tears in my eyes Cos the girl in my dreams isn't you. Oh, oh no, the girl in my... Oh, I don't know. Welcome back. Yes. I'm dancing with tears in my eyes because the girl in my arms isn't you. That's the proper words. And? I used to sing that. Did you? When yeah. I was 16 at the Wonderland Ballroom, where Did I'm sure sing? Rhett English has been many, many times. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Did you do ballroom dancing too? No, I sang. I just sang. While they danced? Yes. That's why I was dancing with tears in my eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you're here for. No. Your life as a ballroom dancer has been absolutely fascinating. How old were you when you started? Oh, the tender age of nine years old is when I first started dancing. And why? Why did you why? start? Uh, was it something My mother made me do it. Oh, no, maybe not. But no, is it, my, was it... my grandma, well, not that she made me do it, but uh, she took me along to a dance championship at the Wonderland Ballroom. I think it would have been around 1970 uh, to watch my auntie and uncle dance in a compete in a competition. Yeah. And probably from that day onwards, I was hooked. So yeah, Aww. from nine years old. Were you attracted to the um, quick step? That's what I used to fascinate me. People would start at one end of the ballroom, and they'd sashay across the floor, <laughs> uh, hopping and chasses here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's one of the. Um, um, you know, faster dancers, but um, I just was attracted to all of it, really. Just, you know, slow dancers, the romantic dancers, the fast dancers. And the glamour. The glamour, so very yeah. Glamorous. All the All the sequins and sparkles yes. and uh, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's Gorgeous. competition uh, driven a lot, though, in the, in the amateur and professional world, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Name drop a few of the things you've won, because there's so many. Uh, oh, well, probably through all the age groups, I've probably won all the um, state titles um, through all our age divisions and uh, won some Australian titles along the way as well and, you know, countless ones in each state that we've gone and competed in and over the years, you know, you forget more of them than, than you remember. remember. Huh? Yes. Um, partners though, how many... Ooh. Is it always been the same partner or different partners? Well, since my first partner was, uh, you know, at the age of nine, mm -hmm. then, yes, yeah, so I have had many partners along the way. Probably had a different partner in, in nearly each age division, really. Oh, okay. So I've probably, I could probably still count them all on, on my hands, under, well, under 10. Well, we've got some so. photos here, haven't we, of yeah. you starting off uh, when you were... Just a wee little boy, I think. Oh, well, they're not, not a wee little boy. They're probably a little bit older, but... Um, Just say, say you were very young. Oh, right, I was very young. <laughs> well, well, there you yes, are I in guess full I sale. was young then. You know, in, well, not... not 20s? So, oh, probably... Uh, nice frock uh, you're wearing. Very... Th 
Oh, no. 30. No, you're 30. the one 30. in black. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's dancing show. at the Australian Championships uh, when we won, uh, won a title, my wife and I. Yeah. Oh, your wife, you yes. married a dancer too. Yeah, yeah. So that's wonderful. Many years together and, yeah. uh, and uh, dancing sort of through uh, the UK and Europe and uh, then back in Australia and, and then running our own studio. So oh, fantastic. that's an, an early one uh, when we were just dancing around the UK, probably the first year we danced together in, in, in England. That's, is that a rumba or something? No, uh, that would be a samba. We'd probably do some samba, crusadas walks, I would say, in that one. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Yeah, Ooh, great action of, shots. They're lovely, yeah. aren't they? They're lovely, they? aren't they? Yeah, a little bit of waltz probably yeah. there. Yeah. Love the frog. What colour dress was that? Oh, what, how good your memory? Say it was a, that was a pale pink one. OK. Yeah. Oh. It's just remembering all these, um, I guess, from the past. Yeah. So yeah, but like, it was, yeah, it seems like a long time ago. That's when we were were, were top amateur and professional competitors, and it was uh, after that that we then you know decided to hang hang up our dance shoes and uh, train others to follow our footsteps. Yeah. Do you still dance though? Yeah, I still dance. Yes. Well, so. it'd have to show people, wouldn't yeah. it? Well, yes, I, mean, I suppose. Sort of but demonstrate. For dance for pleasure. Oh yeah, well yeah, do a little bit of dancing for pleasure, but most of it would be is more for 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 work, yeah, and you're teaching and you're training others. Yeah. So is it is it like a muscle memory thing? Once you get the actual steps in the in the, um, it's a format, isn't it? Most ballroom dancing is a format, a repeat format. Uh, yes, but I mean. Good dancers are always taught to be able to, you know, freestyle and be able to. When you get to a certain moves, level, though, you know, um, you know, you don't necessarily. You have a routine, but you can deviate from that routine if need be. If you're on a crowded um, dance floor or well. comp- in a crowded competition. Oh, of course, yeah. of course, competitions. You're not alone, are you? Yeah, with everybody you else, you have other people on the floor with you of course. at the same time. So you can't of course. always dance your routine. I must admit that the new look of the Dancing with the Stars type programs makes you think, oh no, you're going to compete individually, but of course you're not. Yeah. Sorry, you were about to no, say. No, I was about to say, was watching it as a young kid that, you know, watch these programs and I always I wonder how they don't actually bump into one another. Yes. That yeah. there's, because there were so many. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, on the odd occasion it, it might happen, but usually yeah. dancers have yeah. the skills to be able to sort of navigate themselves around <laughs> and, and <laughs> hopefully the ladies follow if the man yeah. has to, you know, change yes. his, his direction. Yeah. And is that still the way it's done? Yeah, it's still the way it's done. So, you know, we'll have uh, big uh, competitions and uh, you might go through uh, heats and finals and, and you'll have your, your final six top couples on the floor all together at the same time mm. being judged. Yeah. Mm. So what's the art of steering? <laughs> the art of steering, well, <laughs> well, it could take a little bit of time to go through that. You'll have to come down to the studio, Malcolm. But uh, <laughs> it's just more you learn how to uh, just, you know, use your body in different ways mm. and, and if you've got a good frame and a good connection with your partner then mm. uh, then she's able to feel you know if you're going to you know change your direction or go into a different mm. different group of steps mm. Wonderful. How, how in your life with being in the ballroom dance industry how much has it changed do you feel from I remember when I was singing at the ballroom everything was very sort of regimented is it still the same uh, well, the, for competitions, the, the uh, music has to be sort of fairly kind of strict tempo, but we use very modern tracks these days. So, mm. um, you know, you might get a cha-cha-cha where they use, you know, a lot of top 40 music. So um, it's become, you know, it stays relevant uh, in, in this day and age. So, mm. yeah. Well, we'd have to, yeah. I guess, to mm. progress. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Is it, for people wanting to sort of pick this up, you obviously run your own studio, mm. but is it a hard thing to start when you're older? No, I've always wanted to do this, they uh, say. Yeah. yeah. Never had the chance when I was young, bringing up children and... Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's surprising. A lot of people do who have danced when they're younger and then they get married and have children and then afterwards and their children grow up, they come back to ballroom dancing because it's, you know, great exercise for them and something that they can do together. And, um, but whether they've danced before or whether they're beginners, you know, it's very easy like, you know, to uh, start to learn in a beginner's class and, you know, within no time they think they can't dance and, you know, they'll 
you just start suddenly it's happening you know one step after the other and oh, and yeah. within you know within a short amount of time then yeah they're dancing do you often get uh, young couples that are getting married come to you because they want to learn how to dance for their first for dance their wedding. as yeah, a wedding yeah we, yeah we do a lot of first I know dances my son too. Yeah. Did that? They yeah. did so lessons. These days, people do want to, you know, make a good impression make on their it. wedding, and, yeah. and uh, you know, even if it's something very simple, just as long as they, you know, feel confident and, mm. and, and not shuffle around the floor and actually or trip do the something. bride up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry, yes, pull up that train. Excuse me. Um, so, if I was to, at this time of life, say, okay, I think I'd like to try that, but I'm a single man. I don't have a partner. How does that work? Well, if you're a single man and you don't have a partner, then uh, you know if you if you go into a dance studio, I'm sure there's at least one, if not two, single ladies there looking for a single man to <laughs> dance with. So you know, very easily. You know, very very do partner. relationships still get formed on the dance floor? Uh, there's been many a, a relationship formed on a dance yes. floor. Like, well, Yours? Ours was one of them. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah, so um, many do, you know, at many ages, uh, you know, and people in later in life that, uh, you know, find themselves single and, and go out to, you know, to dances like at Wonderland and, you know, meet other people. Well, that's what yeah. you've got coming up. Yeah, yeah. So You've got a charity ball coming up? Yeah, there? we have a, we run a charity ball every year at Wonderland on the 19th of October and it supports childhood cancer and people mm -hmm. can come along and uh, there's a lot of uh, general dancing that they can do as well as um, some great entertainment as well, yeah. And do you entertain then in that? Do you still fit into your costumes? If you I don't know, I would she... still quite fit into my costumes. <laughs> oh, just and a tighter cummerbund. Does she have all her lovely ballroom gowns? Oh, she's got a couple of them still, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of them have been passed on or people that have wanted to, oh, okay. to buy them. But yeah, yeah but no, Malcolm, I, I, I run the event, so I, so I guess I entertain people that You're way. just taking money <laughs> at the door, I understand. <laughs> hey, um, with shows like Strictly Ballroom, um, mm -hmm. Because that showed, I guess, a side of ballroom dancing that made up a good story. Yeah. Yeah. Is it really like that behind the scenes? Do people really get their knickers in a knot to that degree? Well, look, any sort of competitive sport, people can get their knickers in a knot. But, of course, you know... Um, oh, sorry, I should have said their feathers, <laughs> feathers in a in twist. A twist. You know, or, the, or, you know, feathers flying. <laughs> yeah, um, that too. But, um, uh, you know, naturally for a, for a movie, you've got to make things larger than life. Of course, a good story. Yeah. Of course, there's, you know, there's always, you know, everybody can, you know, get their... You know, Feathers in a, in a fluff, but, yes. but you know, to a, to a certain degree. So, you know, but exaggerate that a bit more and you've yeah. got Strictly Boring. Yeah. 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 Stay with us. Mm. We'll get Jane back and we'll just have a bit of a chat before we say goodbye. We're back. And thank you for coming back. We're with Jane and Rhett. Now, Rhett, you've got a special event coming up in the next few weeks. I do, yeah. Uh, and, it's, of course, it's at the wonderful Wonderland Ballroom. The wonderful <laughs> Wonderland. <laughs> and it's a big uh, charity event supporting the Childhood Cancer Association and it's our Night of Stars Ball. And uh, we have some, some fabulous dancers, top dancers from, uh, from Australia coming to do a show and people can come along and enjoy the entertainment and, uh, and dance the, and night, dance away. the night away. Yeah. And we were just saying before, you should speak to Jane because then you can be the part next of the Zest Fest next yeah, year. Yeah, that would be great. We'd yeah. love that. And Jane, of course, <laughs> Zest Fest starts... On Monday, October the 14th, kicking off with the Zest Fest duration in Adelaide Town Hall at 6pm. And the phone... Uh, the not, Yes, the phone number and the website if you want to find out more. Phone number 8232... 0422 and the website is zestfest.org.au It's that .org.au that confuses everyone. Absolutely. What happened to .com? <laughs> How fast we move on. <laughs> Heavens. Well, it's been great talking to both of you and although I, I guess a lot of people are thinking this is all about older people, it isn't. No, Dancing no, isn't. No. No. All ages. And yeah. Zestfest, whilst it's predominantly... Over 50s. It Absolutely. really, everybody's going to age, but everybody's <laughs> going to age. So find out now about more of it. Of course, Janice and I aren't. Although she just had a birthday. <laughs> when I'm 60. 
Oh, that's a good song, that. We should have sung that before. I wish we had it. So until next time on Our Time. Yes, please join us next time. Take care until then. Yeah, I'd better take care too. Keep yourself nice till then. Bye. Bye.